Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and we have joining us again Hannah who is a U of A animal biology student and this week we're going to look at birds, bugs and mammals and we are going to talk a little bit about some nature apps that you might find useful. I'm sure you've all seen rabbits in your neighborhood. We've seen quite a few. It seems like they have a cycle. Some years there seems to be hardly any rabbits around and other years there seems to be tons. And this year there seems to be a lot, at least in our neighborhood. Now this is what the rabbits will look like now, but if you notice them in the winter, you might have noticed that they were white. And this is because they can blend into the snow a lot better when they're white. And so when spring comes, they slowly change from white to kind of a mottled white and brown, and then finally to brown again, and that lets them blend into the grass. They can be kind of skittish, so if you get too close to them, they might run away. We went for a walk on the weekend and we saw this little chipmunk. He was blending in with the trees so well we almost missed him. Chipmunks like to store seeds in their cheeks, and whenever I've seen them feeding, they always seem to be near the ground. And they like to hide under bushes and grasses, so you might hear them rustling about. This was the most exciting thing we saw on our walk this weekend. We've seen traces of it before, but we've never actually seen it. It's a beaver. And you'll notice it might look a little bit like a muskrat. They both kind of swim in the same way. But you can tell it's a beaver because when it comes out on land here, it's got a short, thick, flat tail. Muskrat has a long, skinny tail, kind of like a rat. And we've seen traces of where it started to chew down trees before, but we've never actually seen a beaver. Something else we also saw on the river were ducks and their nesting. These are mallards, but you might also see other kinds of ducks, like this pair of widgeons. You can tell they're not mallards because the male has only a little bit of green on its head and less white on the body, but the female is hard to tell. Something else you might see in water are diving beetles, and normally they're very graceful swimmers, but on land they're not very graceful. This one is sadly out of place and is having a lot of trouble taking off. If you see a beetle and you don't know what type it is, don't pick it up because it might bite, like this one. And we wish this beetle luck in getting to a water habitat where it will once again swim gracefully. Here's a bird we talked about last week. It's a junco. It's spring, so they're singing now. If you feel like a challenge, try to find a warbler. I've wandered around the Sturgeon River. I can hear them, but it's so hard to see them because you can see how fast they're moving. This is a male yellow rumped warbler, but you might also see yellow warblers as well. And I think you can probably guess what those look like. They're completely yellow. One of the most common birds you're going to see are sparrows, and there's lots of cool kinds coming back. This is a song sparrow, as you might have guessed from his beautiful song. I tend to see these a lot near water, so if you want to find one, look near a lake or a river. We're talking a lot about sparrows today because there's so many of them coming back right now and there are so many different varieties, like this one here. This is a savannah sparrow. It looks like a song sparrow but has yellow on its face. This is a white crowned sparrow that showed up in front of our front window. You can see it has very distinct black and white stripes on its head, but you can also find ones with brown stripes. Both males and females can have white or brown stripes. Nature watching is fun for your whole family, including your dog. The final kind of sparrow we saw this week is a white-throated sparrow. And by this point, you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot of different kinds of sparrows. And you're right, it is a lot. But there are some tools you can use to help you. These are four different nature apps that we can recommend to you. There's lots out there. These happen to be four that we really like. Nature Links is really neat because this one is an Alberta-specific app. It has birds, bugs, animals, plants. It has a little bit of everything and the great thing about that one is that it is Alberta specific. iNaturalist is another good app. It is not Alberta specific. It's actually worldwide. It's similar in some ways. It has plants and animals and insects. You can do identification and contribute to science. So it's a really cool one to look at. If you want to learn more about bird identification and you're just starting out, Merlin is a really great app. With Merlin you can take a photo of a bird and the app will tell you what kind it is. It also comes with a mini field guide, so you can access photos and recordings of birds without internet access. If 
you want to know what kinds of birds to expect in a particular place, check out eBird. You can view hotspots, which are places with lots of bird species. For example, Big Lake and St. Albert. Your observations on eBird are also used for science. These are four apps that can help you get started with nature, and there's lots of other ones out there. Thank you to Allison, Anthea, and Leslie, who are all St. Albert Public Library staff members, for submitting photos and videos to us. Join, Join us next week for more Neighbourhood Nature. nature.